kitchen and channel so this is fresh pigeon peas that I just picked from my garden and I'm going to show you how it is to be shelled and this can be used in so many different dishes let's get started Hi everyone, so I'm going to show you how I make my peas and alu or peas and potato or as we say here curry alu and peas or curry peas and alu. So I have my peas, my freshly shelled pigeon peas that's in this dish here. I have to wash it. I have my onions finely sliced. I have lots of pimento peppers finely, well cut in half. I have garlic that's freshly grinded. I have one scorpion pepper here that I will use a little piece from. I have my green seasoning. I have my potatoes. Now I'm going to show you how I cut that potato. Now normally I will cut my potatoes in big pieces like this if I'm currying the potato first and then adding in that peas. But today I will be chunking the peas first because the peas is very full and I want that peas to cook for a little bit before I add in my potatoes. So I'm cubing up my potatoes today. You can, if your peas is on the young side and it's not so full full, you can obviously chunk your potato first then add your peas. But I'm doing it in the order of how my peas is. So I just wanted to show you that difference and the peas. So my peas is very full and I will give you a closer look to it. So it's very very full peas. So that's why I'm going to start up with that peas. Let that peas boil and cook up in that curry mixture for a little bit before moving on to the next step. So let's move over to the stove guys. That has been heating. I'm going to add my oil. Give that a swirl. And goes my onions. We're gonna let that saute up or fry up until it's golden brown before adding in our garlic and peppers. So let that come up, come up to saute, I'll show you. In the meantime, I have here my curry mixture, my, well, my curry powder. That's the greenish one. I have my jira powder and I have my saffron powder. 
So I'm going to mix this with water till it dissolves. Well, just until it dissolves. Well. You can add your curry powder and all the rest of your jura powder and saffron powder to your oil as well to the pot instead of mixing it here and add your water to this but I'm just doing it this way like the old time way for you guys and the onions is starting to fry up and sort you up here so I'll show you when it's ready for the rest of peppers and the garlic and it has turned that color that I'm looking for now I will add my pimento peppers. This is pimento pepper or cut in half. I leave them or I left them uh, cut in half because it is going to slowly melt out too. And here I have my garlic. Then goes that. Now I will add my curry mixture or curry paste. Put that on it and let this curry paste come to a thickness or it thickens. Adding in my salt because I want that base to be flavored properly. Always flavor your base and have a, a light taste of it. And once your base is tasting good, your whole dish is going to be tasting good. It has to start from the beginning that flavor, that taste, or that yumminess has to start at the beginning and your whole dish is going to taste delicious at the end and I'm adding a piece of my scorpion pepper I've cut it so I'm going to add a small piece because that scorpion pepper is very hot and you see how that paste has taken down the liquid has dried up and it has fried up really nice. This is where I will add my pigeon peas. Wash it first before adding it in. Give it one more turn. It will fry down nicely. So let me add that pigeon peas first. It is already smelling really nice. And we're going to give this a mix and when I'm adding when this is uh, softened up a little bit and I'm adding in my potatoes I will add that green seasoning at that point to flavor up that potato together with the peas but I want to get this peas cooking a little bit to soften up so at the end the both potato and peas will be soft and have a nice consistency i don't want a soft potato with a hard peas because beans on the whole it has to cook good otherwise it will hurt your stomach you can add um one teaspoon of baking powder to this as well too or you can add a teaspoon of baking soda if you want just to help your stomach from not hurting but i'm going to let this cook properly so it will not hurt your stomach and everything is coated now so I'm just going to cover it a little bit for like five minutes just for that curry to coat that piece properly for it to fry up and then I'll add my liquid I'll show you guys 
So just cover it and leave it and we'll give it a turn. Now we will check it. And you hear that sizzle? That is what I want to hear. That sizzle and I know that piece is coated how it's supposed to be coated with that curry. Now I will add my water. My liquid goes in. And this is just to give it a head start. So let this start back to boil. And once most of that liquid is um, absorbed out or dried out, we'll add that potato to it and continue layering up the ingredients with more water so we're going to cover it again let it continue to cook so we're going to check it now and you see how that water has absorbed or dry up from the peas that is what you want because you want to add your potatoes now because your peas already got a head start in cooking and you want to add that potato in now and let that fry up with that curry in that pot just like when you chunk it from the beginning we don't want to leave water in it and add the potatoes otherwise the potato will have just a boil taste and we don't want a boil taste to it we want a nice curry taste and you know you're eating curry and then we will add back our liquid when this has fried up a little bit again but in the meantime you're going to add your green seasoning. We're going to give it that mix. You're going to taste the salt. And before adding in the potatoes, if you don't want to add potatoes in it, it is regular curry peas. I also have that video up. I will link that link in the bottom of this recipe. The peas, curry peas and aloo. And if you want, you can switch the peas uh, the potato if you don't want potato and you like arrows or you like tanya you can add it instead of the potatoes so you have a choice you can use potatoes you can use arrows or you can use tanya it's all up to your taste and now we will add that liquid all of that liquid goes in I will put up more water to heat in my kettle because in the end if that piece is a little on the hard side we will need to add a little more liquid but it will it should be okay because the piece got a head start to cook and now the both things will be cooking together it has a nice curry color so I'm going to cover this back it has enough salt for me one teaspoon of salt this is about five cups of peas to two potato. So I'm going to let this continue to cook. I'm going to cover it and I'll show you when it's finished. And we're going in to check it again. So it started back to cook. And it's coming along nicely. It's feeling on the light side so I know that that potato and that peas is going to be cooked together and it's going to be soft and nice. It's not going to be like a soft potato and hard peas. The boat is going to be really really nice. 
and you see all that pimento pepper that is going to flavor up that curry peas and potato curry peas and aloo really nice so i'm going to cover it back and let it continue to cook on medium heat or on low heat until it's finished and we're going in to check it now so you see how the water has dried out and our potatoes is softened so what I'm going to do now is add a sprinkle of that roasted brown jeera and some water now because the peas is soft, the um, potatoes are soft. So we just need to make that gravy for this curry peas and aloo or curry peas and potato everything is softened nicely so we're just going to give it about three minutes again and then i'm going to turn off that stove A bit of water again. So by the time it's finished, it's gonna have a nice consistency, nice gravy to eat with roti or rice. Some people just eat it just over the spoon. You can. You can smash a couple pieces of that potato just for that gravy to get a little on the thicker side or you can leave it just as is. The potato is soft. I'm going to cover it and just give it that three minutes and I'll show you when it's done. And we're going in to check it one last time. Looks nice. Has a perfect color, has a perfect consistency. And enough gravy to eat with my roti. So I'm turning off that stove now. Let me give you that closer look there. And that's it. 